Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first look of the new fully electric Toyota BZ4X. I uh, don't know who came up with the name in Toyota, maybe they were uh, influenced by Elon Musk when he was naming his child, but uh, weird name, cool car. Uh, it looks pretty nice, despite maybe small details like those plasticky fenders, but they do have their purpose. But otherwise, besides that, the car looks gorgeous and I want to come a little bit closer show you the details. So let's get onto the front. Uh, check this a very aerodynamic design. We have uh, side tunnelings on the side, we have air intake on the bottom for the battery management system for the cooling of the batteries and you can see uh, LED lights on the top. Uh, daytime rail lights are connected for this chrome part on the front. As you can see there, there's a 360 camera a little bit to the left of the badge. It's not centered for some odd reason. We can also see here washer nozzles for the headlights and that side tunneling here. You can see the daytime running lights on the top and you can see LED lenses. So there's a long beam and fog light integrated in the main light cluster. There's an amber reflector here, usually for the US market only. In Europe, this should be the same as this white but maybe this is one of the early models you can see that and there's a good plastic protection if you're going to light off-roading but you have to protect this otherwise on the sun it's going to fade out and look horrible so you should put like a ceramic coating or some sort of uv protection uh, coating on it now over here we have a nice big alloys and if i can read from the tire so these are two 3550R20. If I'm reading correctly, they are kind of shiny. It's a nice diamond cut black, silver on black, excuse me, and then with this gray insert. Now over here is the charging port. And then over here you can see the type two. And this is for AC slow charging and then combined CCS for fast DC charging. Close it up. Now just let's check over here. What do we have? And uh, you can maybe see in the windshield, maybe not. The camera is not focused on that. You can see heated windshield and you can see this really odd design for the screen on the top and the steering wheel. That was a little bit controversial. It was something new. And you can see heaters on the lane assist camera. There's a light and rain sensor over there. You can see the glass roof over there. Really slim roof racks. Maybe they can be open here. You can put the box on the top. You can see the shark fin antenna. But let's check the profile of this car. So I noticed I didn't close the charging port, but uh, you can see beautiful also plastic protection on the bottom and going towards the rear. It's a nice silhouette. Uh, we have a little chrome on the top for elegancy. Have big side mirrors. You have, wow, I think uh, there's one camera and there's another center there and a puddle light. So quite interesting, a lot of stuff going on there. There's a blind spot warning system in the mirror. You see there's actually a, a pillar window as well. We have standard tinting on the rear from Toyota. You can hear press to lock or unlock. They even added PPF inside. That's a nice touch. And there's a physical cylinder for the driver end. Rear door handles also have touch to lock or unlock. And checking here, you have the shark fin antenna that I mentioned. And then this interesting kind of divided spoiler. It's a splitter here, so it kind of turns the air down. And then there's another spoiler on top of the body also so interesting reflectors on the side there so this would be toyota's type 2 wall connector moving to the side here i would like to back up a little bit to show you now uh, let's open the cargo area the back as you can see the full car in the frame so there we go and wow there's a lot of cargo space so this is very accessible. I love the hatchbacks. And let's see here. Over here you have your uh, Type 2 cables. Pretty long one. You have the 
BZ4X carpets and all weather floor mats. You can see that. So this is a flat, so loading area is great. And you have a little extra space in there as well. You can see that, but it's heavy stuff on the top. And there's a uh, home charger. And there's a little bit of like a patching kit or like a lifter. Just put this back. So there's like extra three fingers, four fingers there and checking the on the right we have the hooks here maybe for groceries or data points one cold uh, LED light and on the left you have the GBL speaker so that's nice or maybe a, like a, a subwoofer also here those smart grocery hooks max four kilograms and you can see you can have down the seats 60 40 you have the top tether points and uh, you can uh, adjust the reclining of the seats. This was supposed to be closed, but someone didn't close it up. So you can see how that looks. Would be shelf if I back up one more time. Um, you can close here or lock or manually if it fails. You can see LED license plates open and there is a wide lens camera there for the backing. So interesting design for the taillights. I love the LED connected bar. And then these are all LED technology, even for the turn signals, reverse lights. And we have an interesting diffuser, also plastic, but look at those strikes on the bottom. Very cool looking. And I love the gray color. It's a metallic, looks nice on these lights all-wheel drive so I guess this is a dual motor setup I haven't checked the spec honestly now let's see the opening and closing sound it's pretty solid and rear doors could open a bit wider though if you're having a child seat but let's check the seals on the top there we go you can press down here and then it will lock for the kids so they can open from the inside for safety reasons this is nice and softly padded this is softly padded and then we have some piano black here by windows you can lock these this is kind of plasticky so hmm, i don't know what i feel about that there's decent uh, bottle area there speaker here and let's see if we can knock down the seat you can see that i, I think it's almost flat but uh, there's some stuff on the back there is a seatbelt aligner there, but it's not really uh, always uh, doing its job, I would say. So as you can see, this sit is a bit up, and then you can just like recline it there, and you can see the back end of the shelf, and you can see the banner roof. Checking the seats, have some nice leather perforated in the middle, you have the giant anchor isofix there. And let's jump inside. So we have this beautiful paper covers. Um, wow, there's a loads of feet room, loads of knee room. Big pockets there. Let's close it up. Hear the closing sound. Sounds solid. And wow, there's so much space here. Maybe someone short was sitting on the front. Okay, have that in mind. But I'm two meter tall person, so. I am sitting in a squat position, as you can see that uh, kind of uh, normal in electric cars because of the batteries underneath. As there's no transmission tunnel, there's like a small hump here though, but I think you can fit a third person on the rear. This is very soft, so there's plenty of uh, feet room. Uh, here we have two USB-C chargers for fast charging. You have heated seats, I guess three levels to, judging by these dots. In Evans, we don't have the key, and I'm gonna ask for the infotainment later. Okay, let's see here. You can extend this. Okay, so this is plasticky. Mm, could have been adjustable though, and there's no ski opening there. There is a LED light on the top. You have uh, long windows. There's a small one in the seat pillar, so I'm not sure about the blind spot, but you do have blind spot warning. 
And now checking the roof, uh, they added this so I can go with my hand. I can see my fingers probably on the other side. But I think, yeah, there is like a bar here. So this is for safety in case, I guess, you flip over. I, otherwise, it would be nice to have what, one piece. But it is there for safety, obviously. And two meter tall person, 6.6 .6 in feet. Um, when the seat is fully reclined, I'm kind of okay. If I straighten up my back, I'm a bit hitting with my head. But if I was an average, I would be also hitting my head on the rear and touching with my hair. Now let's check here. If I go to the upright position, then uh, it's even worse. So you can see that. And taking a look at the front. So that is funky steering wheel. Let's get on the front where you're going to spend most of your time if you buy the car. Just to check some details, no hooks here. This is adjustable, of course. And you have hooks here in all four sides. Nice, slowly closing handles. So let's get on the front of the car and check the uh, driver side. So this is also nicely opening and closing. Front doors open a bit wider, not too much. Uh, I would advise Toyota to, you know, have at least the back doors open a little bit wider for the kids, maybe. Uh, good seals. And uh, inside we have soft touch materials. You can have here memory seats, two positions for couples. And over here you can see that. This feels a bit cheap, but the rest is okay. You have here automatic folding. Uh, you can control a power windows. You can uh, lock or unlock from the inside close the windows for the rear and all power windows but looks like only the driver end is fully automatic unfortunately I think that's a cheap option so this should be all fully automatic like the rest of the car industry small and big so this is a few plastic on the bottom tire pressure is here more luggage more people inside you need to have a high tire pressure in the rear checking the seats uh, back and forward lumbar this is tilt and let's see here this doesn't go up or the whole seat goes up and down but the knee area doesn't um, well you can see that and I'm gonna pop the bonnet later you can see here pedals you can have lights on automatic I guess long beam you can open or close from the driver position in the rear and you can adjust the steering column manually you can see the top there and you can see inside here, there are two USB-Cs, there's a 12-volt outlet, and there's a little carpet and a Toyota book, and a floating metal bridge. Let's sit inside. There's a little buzz sound, I think, for the lights. Yep. And going down. Okay, so I'm going to switch to white lens. That was a seatbelt noise and there we go so hmm, this is odd i think it's supposed to be like definitely lower this because in this case i can't see the screen so this is some sort of like peugeot uh for this for american it's a french brand so the screen is on the top there and you have a nice big long screen zooming back in so let's check the funky details in this car so there's a steering wheel in it has a smooth leather it has some texture put more on the smooth side it's around and no flat bottom and when you move the steering wheel these buttons are on so they're moving with the steering wheel um, okay I thought for a moment there was a French brand which this would be fixated and then the steering wheel would move it was like a weird design, but this is just actually normal. <clears throat> got, got kind of confused there for a moment. So we have here voice, excuse me, voice down here, phone calls, I guess, menus. Uh, you can control here stuff, volume, cruise control, lane, uh, speed limiter, distance, reset, set mode, and some other options. I guess this is for the eyes, for driver monitor system. You have here lights, should be on automatic. You have the wiper controls, and on the top you have a fairly big screen for the, actually this is the basil, this is a screen, and over here, so you can see that when my hand is close. Hmm. 
kind of looks like Volkswagen ID, just a little bit bigger, but it's far off for some odd reason, and there's no heads up display. Okay, so let's check the rest of the dash. So you have the air vents here, you can open and close them. This was blowing on the top. Oh, this, this is like, oh, there's a speaker in the A pillar and one here as well. So that looks very quality made, JBL. And there's some air vents there. So this is all soft, soft. And there's like airbag there. This looks high quality finished cloth. And over here, we have here for the, I guess for the brightness trip uh, and there's a little paper here so this is kind of suggesting how you should operate the automatic if you pause and read that there we go you can check that out okay uh on the top here i don't see anything in the plastic either the big nice screen and we have the uh, few buttons we're gonna turn it in the moment temperature okay power start stop for the electric motor uh, there's kind of no point having a start stop button in electric cars i'm a tesla owner so i have a completely different philosophy you just jump inside press the brake and you drive you exit the car turns off uh, anyways have hazards here okay and we have the interesting i guess this is for when you hold the brake for a push to like reverse neutral drive press the park have the electronic parking brake and uh, i guess hold I guess it works like a classical automatic. If it goes forward, then you have to press maybe to hold. Mm, okay. And I'm not sure what this is for. Maybe it's a uh, recuperation level. Maybe you can drive with one pedal only. Have the eco mode. Why would you have an eco mode in an electric car? X mode, I guess, for the all wheel drive. Traction off, self parking, cameras, and then. I guess set, maybe you can change your driving modes there. Mm, and then this is interesting. It looks like piano black, but look at this. This press this and opens a QI wireless charger there. There's some warnings there, USB A as well. But look at this, this is kind of transparent. You can see through it. Mm, I feel this is gonna get scratched all over. And just another angle to a roll out. Let's see if I can put the camera closer. You can see that there's a USB C, and for the passenger there, there's a carpet there. And then we have this sliding armrest, uh, it's adjustable cup holders inside as well. There's a button here you can press so you can open this up. There's some uh, papers there, and this is a hub. It's fairly spacious, you can see that size of that and then there's even more room inside look at this there's so much room i think this is the largest i saw and then this fits inside just put this back, covers back there and yeah you can slide this close it up so someone cannot see what's inside or you can just let it uh open up and there is no uh, glove compartment as far as i saw the seats have big bolsters and they are comfy. You can adjust the headrest there. You can see the rear. I think there should be a shade here. Uh, and checking the top, you have a basil here. So there's a little maybe here for the auto dimming. And uh, in the uh, Subaru version, I thought I saw a option with that screen when you face it up. And over here you have the doors on or off, you have the lights, so that's quite nice. You have the open or close, I don't have the key. And there's a emergency call button there. And you have the airbag information and maybe some seat belts, actually only airbag information there. A speaker maybe for, and here for Bluetooth calls, you know, phone calls. And there's a light there. If you open this up, it's nice and cool. Matches the rest of the interior. And there's a privacy mirror there. You can open or close. No documents holder. And let's see if this extends. So this area is not covered. And nope, it does not. But they can add that in the future, maybe. And uh, now I think we should uh, ask for the key and see if we can turn on the infotainment. So this is the main infotainment. We have navigation. It looks like Google Maps. Uh, we have here music uh, also, Google-ish. We have here uh, recent favorites, contacts, keypad, uh, update, contacts, templates. We have car information. We have curse history. 
and current power consumption. So you can see that in kilowatts per 100 kilometers, the European standard uh, charging schedule there. So you can add through multiple day uh, through the week or time. You have a web browser. Uh, I guess you have to connect to a Wi-Fi to get that, maybe from your phone. And over here you can see personal uh, info, and Bluetooth devices, uh, in general. So it's, screen is fairly responsive. Uh, they didn't want to leave us the key, so it might switch off at some point. Uh, you can see that. Uh, I don't think there's a night mode. It'd be cool if they added that. Voice vehicle customization. Uh, charging so I think this is like a work in progress so and software updates I think this should be over the air there are voice commands here so this is just a little preview you can see this is definitely what's like a Google Maps perhaps it's not but uh, it's fairly responsive and fast so yeah definitely looks like a Google Maps we are in Bulgaria uh, in the capital Sofia on auto show. Uh, there are here volume settings and you can turn on or off the screen. Uh, I would like to show you this one as well, but uh, we don't have the key for that. Uh, but it looks very nice and I like the a long screen. And um, that was the infotainment. Uh, we're gonna exit and check the front bonnet. As far as I've seen, there is no front space, but still, I'm going to show it to you. So there is like inside, push it to the left, you can see the mechanism, and voila, you have to use the little leg on the top, uh, black thing is your washer fluid, and that's the electric motor inside. Uh, we're going to let it drop, and it should close perfectly. So. That was the new Toyota BZ4X. Uh, we're in Bulgaria, so there's going to be Celeric here, and uh, I cannot read that. So uh, Now I'm going to turn on the lights for the end, so you can see just a little bit, and wrap it up here. So just to have those lights on position lights. So you can see now the daytime running lights only on the top looks nice and sharp it's following the middle chrome line and then the rear I love the LED connected bar once again and just to show you the hazards and wrap it up there I'm gonna turn the lights on maybe even the fogs on So you can see the turn signals are LED. You can see also the fog light there, LED. You can see the turn signals in the mirrors. And you can see that on the top, the daytime running lights turn into turn signals. So that was the full review of the Toyota BZ4X. If you want to see more from Sofia Auto Show, there's going to be plenty of cars like the beautiful new Mazda CX-60. So subscribe to the channel, click the bell, and then click on all. Otherwise, you won't get the notifications. And as always, stay safe. I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye.